Wow, I, I think that we have covered so much in such a short period of time. I'm feeling very inspired and I can see so many opportunities to use these tools in classrooms around the world. Um, so today we have talked about these three ways in which emotions influence learning. So we talk about the fact that we think deeply about things that we care about. So if we don't care about certain topics, we're not gonna be engaged in our, in, in deeply considering what this means for me, right? So we wanna make sure that uh, learning is engaging for our students that is personal relevant to them. Um, the second way, is that we cannot have thoughts without feelings and vice versa, right? Those are two complementary things that we need in order to make decisions, to learn new concepts, to learn new skills. And finally, that emotions drive our attention, they influence our ability to process information, to be ready for learning and understand our context. And then for each one of those, um, of those research, findings, we have shared three strategies that you can use to integrate emotions in your classroom. The first is to make sure that uh, the material is personally relevant for your students, right? That you are making the connections between those materials and the life and the personal interests of your students. Second strategy that you create those opportunities for students to solve open-ended problems. Why? Because prescriptive activities are emotionally impoverished, right? So we want to make sure that students are building those connections, those emotional connections with um, what they are what they do in the classroom. And finally, building those uh, regular emotional check-ins with your students. Again, this is something that we have to do systematically, right? We don't do it when students, we feel like they're out of control or it's a day when things are not going the right way. We wanna make sure that that's something that we do on a regular basis. So we're helping students to normalize talking about their emotions as a way to know themselves better, but also to make better choices. And a note about any time that you uh, try to do something new. So hopefully you heard something new that you want to go and do in your classroom tomorrow, right? Tomorrow morning, first thing. And there is a process moving yourself from judgment in a place where you say this is right or wrong to a place of curiosity. And I know that several of you started the session today saying, I'm feeling curious. Well, guess what? Curiosity is a wonderful emotion to drive learning, why? Because when we are experiencing curiosity, our brain is open for learning. We are open uh, to do new things, to try new activities, to maybe look at things from a different perspective. So I would wanna encourage you all to approach this process of maybe implementing some of those uh, lessons from CISO to think about some of those strategies from a place of curiosity. Um, and this is my contact information. Um, I have a, a website where I have been blogging for many years. So go ahead and go head over loriamartinez.com. The first chapter of the book is currently available for free. So that's a free downloadable on my website. Um, and if you hang out on social, I'm on Twitter at Loreamart and Facebook at Lorea Martinez SCL. And of course, if you want to know more about teaching with the heart in mind, you can always grab a copy of the book. It makes for a great gift for educators. Um, so this during the holidays, if you are not sure what to gift uh, your colleagues, that can be a, a great gift. And just a, a sneak peek into what teaching with the heart in mind really is. So HARD is an acronym that um, stands for five essential social emotional skills. And you have them here um, on the slide. Unfortunately, I don't have time today to go deeper into the model, uh, but I'm hoping that you check out those resources and, and that you are willing and open and excited to learn more about it. And it is a fantastic book that I keep on going back to over and over again. And as I said before, too, going to um, Lorea's website and I subscribe to the parenting newsletter, which is fantastic as well. So there's some great resources there. Um, we also 
Uh, yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Martinez, for sharing all this. So helpful. I love seeing the responses in the chat right now uh, that people are feeling like they had a little bit of inspiration to be able to go and do this stuff and reminders to do this in the classroom and how important it is and to really appreciate and understand those emotions of our students because I know that they have a lot of emotions right now. Um, so we really just appreciate you spending the time with us going through these three strategies and helping teachers really understand how they can incorporate them into their classrooms. Uh, you're a wealth of knowledge for us, so thank you. Um, and as promised, we're finally ready to share <laughs> with you the handout that has all of the links. It's broken down by the strategy. Um, and there are three lessons per strategy that you can go and use in your classroom right away. Uh, you simply have to click the link and you save it to your My Library. Um, if you need more basics on how to use Seesaw, you can check out our training page at web.seesaw.me forward slash training to help you um, learn how to do that. And it was put in the chat. Um, we can put it in the chat another time too, and it will be in the follow-up email as well. Um, so make sure that you check that out. Um, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump into, we've got a little bit of time for some questions. Um, and so here are a couple of the questions that we have. I, I'm going to answer one first on Seesaw. Just there were a lot of questions about whether this content is available in grades three through five. Uh, right now, as we've started building the content, we've really been focusing on that pre-K through second grade. Um, but we do hear you and uh, we appreciate hearing the need for that because that is something that we will take um, back and we will um, do everything we can to push that along. But um, we understand there is that need for the content in third through fifth grade. I think you could try some of these lessons with your third through fifth graders and see the reaction. The social stories are still great um, even to have them process and understand what's going on. So another question Ali got in the chat. Yes, Dr. Lorea Martinez, this is actually for you. So I'll pose the question and then um, have you answer. The question was around being a specialist teacher. So what's the best way for specialists, whether it's STEAM teacher, art, music, um, et cetera, to support students in cell? Great question. Yes. And and SEL has, I would say, has no borders. So it doesn't matter if you teach art, science, if you have um, one classroom with 24 students, or if you see 120 students a day, you can integrate SEL in your instruction. And many of the strategies that I shared today, you have to think a little bit more about how you may incorporate, but like the idea of an emotional check-in, sometimes it can be as simple as having students use uh, popsicle sticks and having uh, 10 cups, uh, number one to 10, and have students put the popsicle stick, uh, depending on how they are feeling that day as they are entering your classroom and then changing when they leave. So there are many things that you can do to do it um, if you don't have 30 minutes to, to, to use for a, uh, an SEL lesson that you can definitely do small activities to check in with your students. And then any subject, um, you can have opportunities to integrate the social emotional competencies with your content. So anytime that you are helping students to connect with their emotions, to do regulation, to working groups, and, and we didn't talk about relationships today, but truly like to, to build that sense of community, those are many different ways in which you can emphasize and help students practice those social emotional uh, learning skills. Thank you, Dr. Martinez. So another question we got was, how do you provide those opportunities with a set curriculum for language arts or for math? Yes, so for language arts, anything that has to do with character analysis, for example, so many starting in third grade, I believe at least for those states that use the Common Core, they have standards that are related to character analysis. So you have to see, um, you know, what is the development of the story? How are characters uh, making decisions? And there's always an emotional component to that. So being able, being a lot more explicit about that character analysis from that SEL perspective can be a way to integrate with ELA. In uh, writing, that's another Another great place where you can interview people or talk to people about their experiences. 
hero's journey, right? When you are writing a story and you are describing a problem, how that problem gets resolved, how are the characters reacting? There, are, there is a lot of SEL in writing stories. And even in, um, in nonfiction, there are ways to connect with your reader, right? As a writer, those are ways also in which um, you can see SEL reflected. And with math, that is a great subject. I shared the example of how math is one of those uh, content areas that generates many emotions in people and I highly recommend being very explicit and exploring what are some of the emotions that come up for students and analyzing and exploring self-talk with your students so many of us that maybe you didn't have a good a good experience with math you have negative a negative pattern how you talk to yourself when you are stuck in a problem so we are helping students to develop to reframe how they are talking to themselves when they are in uh, facing a challenging situation or a challenging problem so those are some ways in which you can integrate SEL into into content and um, and in the book I go into depth about how you can do that for each one of the competencies and how has many, many examples. Awesome, fantastic. Um, I know there were a few other questions. A lot of them are a little bit more specific to lessons. So we're gonna get there in a second, but um, we will follow up if we didn't get a chance to answer every single one of those questions. But we have some wonderful people in the back channel who have been answering your questions as we go. So that's great. Um, as we're wrapping up right now, uh, we really, really wanna encourage you to take some time to think about how you can incorporate these strategies that you learned today into your daily routines. Uh, and encourage you to try one of these SEL lessons that we're giving with uh, giving to you in the next seven days. It's a great time. Maybe it's your end of the school year and you can try them out. Maybe um, you've got just a little bit of time before a winter break. And this is a great time to test it out. And we would love to hear how the lessons go. So you can share with us on social. You can tag us. Um, hashtag Seesaw or Seesaw Lessons. You can also use um, the hashtag Heart and Mind. Uh, and we would love to hear how you're using them in the classroom um, and what's, what's going on with them in your classroom. So uh, we want to make sure as we're wrapping up right now too, um, we promised that we would mm -hmm. get some of you a signed copy of Heart and Mind from Dr. Lorea. So uh, we are going to put in the chat quickly um, the link to our uh, quick little feedback form. There it is. It's in there. Um, so go ahead and click on that. And we would love your feedback. And by completing that feedback, you will be entered to win one of those signed copies of Teaching with a Heart and Mind. Um, and we'll reach out to the winners following this session. Uh, we just really, really appreciate um, you, Dr. Martinez, for coming and sharing with us. Allie and I were just reflecting on how practical, how you know teachers, how you know what's going on in the classroom and um, all of the strategies that you shared are just useful, um, very useful and practical and so helpful for our students right now. So we really appreciate your time with us. This has been a really fun hour to be together. Um, and there were just a couple of questions. So yes, if you need more information about the rest of the Seesaw lessons, you can go to web.seesaw.me lessons and stay tuned because sometime in January, um, you'll have early access to four collections of Seesaw lessons. And one of them probably is going to be <laughs> on social emotional learning. Um, but it will be the whole entire collection for free. So check back, stay tuned um, for a little bit more of an announcement about that coming in January, but go ahead and visit that website for more information if you want to. Um, and we, we just so appreciate you, Dr. Martinez for coming. And we all also appreciate everybody um, who joined the webinar uh, with us, asking your questions, posting in the chat and spending this time with us. Yes, I'm going to echo Tracy and say thank you, Dr. Martinez, and thank you all. Um, teachers, thank you for everything you are doing. We so appreciate you. Yes, thank you, CISO, for being so in tune with what educators need right now for making the space to talk about SCL. Um, and thank you also to all the participants for being here with us today. Yes, wonderful. Well, thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday, if it's Wednesday where you are. And <laughs> yes, thanks for joining us. We'll see you again soon here at Seesaw. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you.